So hello everyone who joined us today. Um, my name is Liron David and I'm the Policy and International Relations Chief Officer at ENOSH, the Israeli Mental Health Association. And nice to see you all. We are joined today by the Zero Project uh, to a webinar that will um, uh, show you how we can apply more uh, best practices in the mental health field to the Zero Project. You will understand uh, what is the Zero Project and how you can nominate yourself. Um, and before I'm, I'm giving the floor to Robin from the Zero Project team, um, I want to share with you what Enosh is doing and how we uh, had uh, gained this collaboration with the Zero Project uh, through um, our submission in recent years. Um, so we started um, applying for the Zero Project in 2018 to the Zero Project 2019. Um, and it was independent living, the, the same theme that is uh, um, this year in 2023. And back then we thought it would be interesting to showcase our best practice on supportive housing for women with the uh, psychosocial disabilities and sexual trauma. Um, and we got accepted to the Zero Project and had a, a really, um, great experience in trying to scale up this practice. Um, and we gained tools and we met many people from around the world. And again, this year we submitted um, our No Fish program. It's a, it's a program that supports people with psychosocial disabilities and provide them with accessible tourism. Um, and this collaboration today is one of the results from uh, the, the last uh, zero project, because we are trying to see more and more supported um, a solution, supportive solution to people with psychosocial disabilities to bring more mental health uh, professionals, mental health um, organization to apply for uh, the zero project and be part of the network that implement uh, the CRPD, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, implementation uh, in real life, uh, bringing rights to reality. And um, so I will, I can show you some of the things that we do maybe later, Robin, after your presentation, and I will bring you the mic uh, to tell us about the Zero Project. And we are here, Leon is here, uh, our partner, our uh, lived experience uh, um, director, and we are here to help anyone who seek to understand more about how mental health can be applied at, at the Zero Project. So please feel free um, to contact us. We will leave our emails and, and details in the chat. So Robin, thank you. Thank you very much, Liron. It's always a pleasure to always, not only to be with you, but also uh, to be with Enosh here. And actually my colleague and research assistant, Maria Carriar Franco just posted the link in the chat from one of our joint publications, which is the informational one pager on mental health and how our call for nominations is also explicitly geared towards those who are developing uh, innovations um, in the mental health space, which is removing barriers for persons with disabilities. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Robinson Weiss, and I'm the manager of the public sector at the Zero Project. I'm very glad that we have this very small and intimate webinar here today. So please feel free to ask as many questions as you might have. Uh, we'll have the opportunity to engage directly. Feel free to intervene both with audio and video. I will suggest that we keep this presentation short and sweet. I'll aim for around 25 minutes um, of, in my PowerPoint. I will go through all the key details of our foundation, the awards we give out, how to nominate. And my um, colleague, Maria Chiara Franco, our research assistant will also provide you with useful links in the chat window. So feel free to go ahead, click on those links, bookmark them. They will be very useful. Just a quick audio description for those of you who and perhaps can hear me but not see me. I'm a white male in his early 30s, short cropped hair. I'm wearing a dark blue sweater and I'm sitting basically in my kitchen in Vienna, Austria. And I'm very excited to be with you. 
So I will now share my screen and we'll get started. Please um, also intervene in the chat and let me and my colleagues know if I'm speaking too slow, too loud, too soft. If you cannot understand me, if my language is too complex, just let me know and I'll be happy to adjust. So with that being said, the Zero Project Call for Nominations 2023, what does that exactly mean? First of all, we are the Zero Project, a global foundation based in Vienna, Austria. And really, as the name suggests, the Zero and Zero Project is focused on kind of our overarching mission, which is a world with zero barriers. And I would love to tell you a bit more about that and how we work with truly global actors and stakeholders from all around the world. We essentially help to curate and identify innovations that remove barriers for persons with disabilities across all disabilities and across all continents. So as I said, we'll take um, 30 minutes today, plus minus for the presentation and more than 30 minutes for any questions you might have and answers we will provide you with. I'm happy to have uh, Maria here from our team who will moderate the chat with links. Thank you for that. Um, and she will also be coming in in the Q&A with some of her insights um, as the research assistant at the Zero project. And also I'm very glad, you know, not only is Lirana Nenosh one of our former awardees, and she's with us today, so she can also tell you kind of of the added value of what it means to become a Zero project awardee, but we'll also give you concrete examples of the kind of projects which have nominated in the past from the mental health field and which have received an award for you to understand, okay, maybe this applies to my organization or this applies to someone else in my network. And um, also a very important point, which we'll stress throughout the presentation is that it's not only you who can nominate your project, but you can also nominate on behalf of someone else. And a bit, on, a bit more on that later on. In terms of what we will be seeing in this presentation today, it's really an introduction of what we mean by our call for nominations, the topics and subtopics we're looking at, because our work is A, research driven, and B, is focused on a theme each year. That, that theme is in this year's independent living, political participation and ICT. Why those subjects? Because they are part of our four year research cycle, which is informed by the UNCRPD. As I said, we'll talk a bit about some of the ORDs we've had in the past. We'll give you tips on how to put your best foot forward, how to prepare the best nomination possible, and also the, the things to keep in mind as you do so. So as I mentioned, this year, our call for nominations, which are essentially the nominations you submit in order to get a Zero Project Award, are focused on the topic you see here independent living, political participation, and ICT. And we have an entire Zero Call 23, which is the abbreviation we use website, which uh, Maria Chiara Franco will post in the chat, where you can really follow all of the details we're giving you here. So you can, of course, write down, take screenshots, but be aware that all of this information I'm presenting, it's all on the website with clear definitions of what we mean by all of the information that you'll be seeing here today. So when we say identify innovations, when we say nominate, what we are looking for in projects big and small all around the world are actually three key criteria. And it's really which kind of underline why the Zero Project exists. So you can think of us as a marketplace of ideas where people can come to be inspired and also replicate what you are doing. So Everything which we're looking for ideally has an element of innovation. And innovation, we're not, we don't necessarily mean only technology innovation or innovation in a, let's say, Anglo-centric fashion, but innovation in a sociocultural context. What makes your project and how you approach it or how it's structured unique and different from other projects? And specifically within that, that what is the impact where persons with disabilities involved in creating this project? Has this benefited persons with disabilities? Has it removed barriers for persons with disabilities? And for you to provide qualitative and quantitative data. So both numbers and stories which tell the impact which you've generated. And within all of that, 
can your project be replicated and scaled elsewhere? So if your project fulfills all those three criteria, that's already a really good sign. They're not make or break criteria as well. So we also want to stress that, that um, you shouldn't be in any way intimidated by these criteria. We have these criteria. The reason why we have these criteria among others is that we have a multi-stage evaluation process. So we want to understand what your project is about and then to pass on all of that data to external peer review experts, which review that. So these are experts in their field, which are usually reviewing projects from the geographic region in which they are based. So they can truly give us insight into whether that project you submitted is innovative. Has it already been done before in Southeast Asia? Or has it already been done before in a country like Israel? What makes it different to other approaches? We don't have those answers. We are a team of 12 employees based in Vienna, Austria, but we work with 180 partners, uh, pardon, with, with uh, a network with, that spans over 180 countries and 10,000 members. So we really use our network to understand the nominations you provide us with. And overall, and this is where, uh, you know, we've highlighted psychosocial disabilities. Not only are we looking at these three criteria, but specifically we want to know within that how are these solutions relating to psychosocial disabilities, to mental health? How are you, for example, using technology to promote well-being? How are you highlighting practices that are promoting recovery or innovative community-based services? So we really try to look at inclusive and holistic solutions that deal with some of these um, topics which you see in the slides as well. Now we talked about the three key topics um, to broadly define them with independent living. What we're looking for is kind of the idea of freedom of choice, removing barriers and supporting provisions. So not making decisions on behalf of persons with disabilities, but to give them the autonomy to make those decisions themselves and for them to decide when they need support and how the support should look like, what that support should entail, um, et cetera, et cetera. When we talk about political participation in very broad terms, we're talking about the freedom of expression, expression of opinions, the truly inclusive participation in public life, also the element of leadership, having uh, persons in the political arena who are persons with disabilities, and finding out how your projects perhaps are facilitating those leadership positions. And ICT, Information Communication Technology, consists of 12 soft topics. I won't go into them in detail. For that, I would ask you to go to our website, but these include topics such as AI, 3D printing, social media, et cetera. So really looking on the technology side, how technology is removing um, barriers for persons with disabilities. Again, all of these topics which I've listed here are on our website, and I won't go into detail here because for each of these topics, for example, from guardianship to decision-making, we have very clear definitions of what we mean by that. So if you are unsure, okay, what, you know, I have something which, which works within early childhood intervention, but, you know, maybe it's not applicable, or I have something which I consider assistive technology, but I've heard it's not assistive technology. Go to our website. We have definitions there and also examples of former awardees. So you can see, okay, actually, this award from 2018 does very something very similar to me. However, the difference to my program is, and that's what you tell us in the nomination. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that we have this slide here with all the topics of independent living, as well as political participation. So we talked a bit about political leadership, participation in public life, but of course also voting policies and how to make elections accessible is something we're very much interested in as well as access to justice, which is, of course, a topic which is uh, well established uh, in countries such as Israel, thanks to organizations such as Enosh, and kind of marrying attorneys with social workers and making um, the legal experience one that is accessible and inclusive, that everyone under understands and is educated about his or her um, rights in the public sphere. And now within ICT communication technology, as mentioned, what we really want to underline is that the call for nominations is one where we really want to understand not technology 
in a strictly technical sense, but technology and the impact it has. So when we talk about an assistive technology, we talk about something as 3D printing, telling us how that technology actually promotes self-management or recovery or well-being for persons with disabilities, how they can use these tools to not only benefit themselves, but perhaps communities around them. And uh, it's really stressing these impactful and intersectional ways in which not only technology, but also economic empowerment, mental health, political participation, how all that comes together and really improves lives for, for people with psychosocial disabilities. So um, we can't stress enough that this really is a call for nominations um, that is open to the mental health community. And if there are any questions, you know, we'll have plenty of Q&A after this presentation, but please do come in. Now I think kind of the interesting part, so this is all kind of the, the technical and the abstract, what does this look like in practice? What are the type of um, practices and policies that have been nominated in the past? And what I've done here in the next slides is provide just some examples. These are not by any means exhaustive, but give you an indication of, for example, intersection of mental health and government. So the idea that we are interested in government strategies. If you have a government entity, a public body in your country, you are aware of, which is uh, supporting mental health, let us know. An example is the nationwide strategy to fight mental health issues, which was uh, um, submitted to us by the government of Bhutan. Um, essentially what this was, was a national program that was implemented which provided community-based uh, mental care services, but also educated society as a whole about the importance of mental health prevention and possible treatments and such. So if there are these national strategies in place in your countries, please let us know. And this is also the point to stress again, your nomination does not have to be your work. You can nominate on behalf of someone else if you think actually as a beneficiary or someone with lived experience, I'm really thankful for this strategy. And this can be a strategy on a city level, a government level. Let us know. The only thing what we ask for you to do in that instance is to give us a contact person at the entity which actually implemented the strategy. So if you're nominating on behalf of the government of Bhutan, let us know who that contact person is who implemented the strategy. So there is the public side of things. So people with lived experience nominating perhaps something which they are thankful for that they had and they want to share that experience with others to say, well, wouldn't I be happy if other governments in Southeast Asia were to take on this government initiative from Bhutan and to replicate it as well. Um, I'm trying to pull up the next slide. Here we go. Um, also, not only on the government side, but on the civil society side, trying to understand small projects. So um, what we also really want to stress is that since we've collected these innovations since 2013, we have had over 750 awardees. Many of these projects are small projects, are regional projects, are rural projects, and we're actually very proud of them. So we've awarded awards, everything from Microsoft to Romanian NGOs, such as Proact Support Association, which is a wonderful project, which prepared people with psychosocial and mental disabilities to live in their own homes. And you might look at the numbers and say, oh, okay, only 50 people received support services. But then again, if you look at this in the sociocultural context of the lived experience of persons with disabilities in Eastern Europe, these are impressive numbers. There's a lot of um, mental stigmas, mental barriers in place. And for this program to exist and for this program to be successful, sustainable, and well-funded, uh, we want to support that and we want to award that and highlight that. That they have successfully moved on to live independent lives. And it's also projects like these, which we're very proud of to consider. And again, when in doubt that your project is too small, too insignificant, we, we would like you to nominate nevertheless, because you do receive valuable feedback from our peer review experts. So these external experts, which as mentioned, come in and provide feedback on impact, innovation, and scalability of your project. Finally, and this is uh, you know to give a little shout out to to Enos again, uh, who, who convened this webinar. Uh, this I think is a fantastic example of a public-private partnership which received uh, public funding 
that supported housing for women with psychosocial disabilities and sexual trauma in Israel, um, of course, spearheaded by Enosh, in which three or four women with post-traumatic stress disorders um, come together and share an apartment and start to really um, embark on a journey that uh, provides them with uh, the opportunity to live safe and autonomous lives. And I think this is also a picture perfect example of projects which we want to encourage. And um, Liron, I think you can talk a bit more about kind of your AWRD journey and the added value you saw of nominating because maybe in this webinar, it seems abstract. Okay, why nominate for the zero project? What do we get out of it? And I'll try to um, answer that in a bit bit later on in the presentation. Then the last point also mental health and policy kind of again overlaps with the government side of things but to have innovative policies such as the ombudsman um, in Skane, Sweden where a personal ombudsman assists individuals with psychosocial disabilities in taking control of their own life and situations. So this again is something which doesn't require a lot of funding. It's something which is innovative in how the uh, Scana approached um, this topic and for us this is also a great example that um, this is something which could easily be replicated elsewhere and that's why we want to give a platform to it as well. So that's some of the former awardees. Now we get to the nuts and bolts. Okay, you're ready, you're excited, Robin did a good job, you want to nominate now. What are the next steps? Uh, one of the first steps is to access our nomination tool, the screenshot you see here. Um, the reason why there's funny flags here is not because uh, we decided to do flag bingo, but of course we understand that linguistic barriers also exist within disability inclusion. So what we want to stress and highlight is that you can nominate in English, German, Spanish, French, Russian, and Arabic. So all these forms exist. Maria Chiara will post a link to the nomination tool where you can get started. A fun homework I could give you right now is to create your account if you don't have one yet, because you can start your nomination and save it and return to it at any time. So take that first step. The first step is always the hardest one. Once you're inside the nomination tool, once you have your account, it comes easier from there. Specifically, we have uh, various questions you'll have to answer. And this is where I would like to give some tips and to kind of go back to the slide with the three criteria: innovation, impact, and scalability, and to really encourage you to ask yourself with every question you answer, how you're answering it from the vantage point of impact, innovation, and scalability. So when we ask for you to please describe your practice as precisely as possible, what we're looking for is impact, innovation, and scalability, and how it's spelled out. And we have a good example here from one of our former awardees, Be My Eyes, which we think did a great job in very clear and concise language, highlighting what their project is in one sentence, highlighting the innovation, the fact that this is an encrypted application, which is free for everyone, which connects blind and low vision users to sighted volunteers. So if you've never heard of Be My Eyes, you could read these two sentences and understand in a nutshell what they're about. So to ask yourself how you can condense down your project and let us know where the impact, where the innovation, where the scalability lies. And uh, this is kind of summarized here again um, by the, the bullet points. So really language is key. We want to know facts and figures. So quantitative data, give us numbers just in the abstract and talking how great it is doesn't help as much. We need to know who are the beneficiaries, with how many persons with disabilities have you worked. And you might not necessarily think as certain numbers being of value. So when we talk about consultation status or consultation by persons with disabilities, this can be four persons with disabilities meeting in a cafe and giving feedback to you on your strategy, or this can be 10,000 persons with disabilities who filled out a survey form for your business. So we want to understand how many meetings did you have? How many people were involved? The more you give us, the more our experts can make an informed decision. And therefore we also ask for annual reports, handbook, guidelines, et cetera. Now we understand not all of you will have all of this. And again, what I really want to underline is that 
the three pillars, again, impact, innovation, scalability. There are the ideal criteria to have. Not every project will equally have and fulfill all of those criteria. But give us as much as you have. Give us what you think tells your story, which underlines the people you've benefited with, uh, you, the people you've benefited. And of course, help us also visualize your practice and policy. And text alone only goes that far. Videos and photos can make a difference. And these will come in various degrees of quality. Um, we also understand that we encourage you to, to be creative. And, and most often it's not the, the best produced video which tells a story, but it's the, the video which comes from the heart, which shows the beneficiary and uh, persons with disabilities will be able to tell their story in their language in the best possible way. And I think that will truly resonate with, with people. Um, talking about good practices, um, I see Liron, you raised your hand. Would you like to come in or? Maybe after you will finish. Fantastic. Um, again, the good practices kind of builds on what I just mentioned. Uh, think about all the specific things you can provide us with also press coverage, pitch decks, one pagers, videos, pictures. And again, to take be my eyes and as an example, um, this was quite well prepared. So everything which is in kind of an informational one pager, which is um, also accessible, which kind of tells the story. You see a lot of figures here in terms of how many users they have. Uh, who their beneficiaries are, further links and information. So this is, again, only as an example, but uh, something in this direction, you can provide us with informa information that speaks to numbers and is also visual. Um, your nomination will go far. Now, this is where you all start to get nervous. We have 18 days to go um, uh, with our deadline. It gives you enough time, but not a lot of time. So I really encourage you to, again, go into the chat window to see what Maria posted, go on her nomination tool page and create that account. That is the first step. Once you have that account, you can fill out a question a day, save, go back to it and submit it. Or you take, and in our estimation, this will take uh, 60 minutes to collect everything, put it in the questions and off it goes. And um, a bit then on the journey, which happens after the nomination is submitted. Um, so June 19th, the Sunday. So that still gives you that one weekend um, for last minute changes uh, is when the zero call closes. The selection process uh, takes place between May and August. And by selection process, we mean the two stage, actually three stage multi-stage evaluation process where external experts will come in, will review all the information you provide us with. So again, the more you can provide, the more visual, the more data and facts and figures you have, the better they can make that judgment column. Is it innovative? Is it impactful? Can it be replicated? Then the final decisions will be communicated in September to you and publicly announced in December 3rd. So there's a gap between September and December in which we will start to provide added value to you. So connecting you to our network and connecting you to the impact transfer program, which is uh, an accelerator program, which we reserve for 10 awardees each year um, who will receive mentorship uh, opportunities and other um, pitching opportunities. We will also work with individuals uh, such as Kristen Gilger from Arizona State University, who runs the National Center for Disability Journalism. So teaching you, and if it's of interest to you, excellence practices in disability journalism, how to tell your story, how to do media outreach. So there are a lot of added values uh, we see in becoming an AWRD, which then to go back to the last slide, culminates in the big crescendo of our annual conference at the United Nations office at Vienna. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we had 800 participants from 83 countries. This year, even during the pandemic, we had 450 participants from 53 countries. So this really is a global conference. So when we say working across all disabilities and across all continents, we do not exaggerate with, you know, remaining humble. We are perhaps one of the most preeminent practical oriented disability inclusion conference in the world. We're very proud of that, um, that we're also, pardon, we're also um, inclusive, uh, looking for representation from the global south 
and really providing you with access to this worldwide zero project network. And uh, as with any network, you get what you put in, or pardon, you, you, you get, you put in what you get out. Um, and I think Liron can talk a bit more about all the opportunities which arise through becoming a zero project ORD. But I'll leave it at that. Uh, the URL is here again. Maria Chiara posted it as well. I will um, stop sharing my screen so we can all see each other better um, for the Q&A. And I think Liron, you raised your hand and as the convener of this, um, of this uh, webinar, you, you get first div. Thank you, Robin. And thank you for, uh, it's always a pleasure to hear you explain about uh, stuff in the world. So that, that was interesting. Um, I think one of the things that um, maybe are limiting uh, the mental health community to apply is the language barrier. And I'm not speaking about French, English, or Russian, but the, the way of thinking with the way of, of the, how systems work. And many times myself that I was applying for the Zero Project for a few times, it's a matter of how you translate what you do that supports people independence to the human rights and disability rights uh, framework or um, language. And, um, and I think that is why we are doing this webinar and we are trying to open this call for many um, organizations from the mental health community because sometimes we don't think about what we do as an accessibility feature or as a, something that provide independent living for people. We are thinking about it in, in a way of more, maybe some, some of the organization more on, on a medical perspective or more um, support and clinical elements in the, in the process. And, and they can be translated into a human rights language. And so, so I'm, I'm saying if, if you have any questions or, or, or trying to figure out whether your practices are a fit to this zero project, contact the, the, the zero project team, contact us. Uh, we can help you understand if, if you can, and, and, and we encourage you to do that because a lot of innovation is out there in the mental health field. It's just that doesn't connect it to the disability community sometimes. So that's one thing that I wanted to say. The other thing is, is why to, to submit. And uh, we were also participating in the impact transfer program. Uh, with the with the project on the supportive uh, housing um, and it gave us um, a new language to see how we can um, make a bigger change with what we have the small things that we have in Israel can ma maybe replicated around the world and also to gain tool to understand in within our organization how we do things how we measure success how we measure the impact do we know how to really translate what we do to the um, disability community? That's something that you need sometimes to meet the people from the bigger, larger community. Uh, you need to have some supports from the Zero Project team and, and all the um, people that, that uh, you bring in the Zero um, to help organization meet each other and understand. And what is really nice that you really celebrate disability in the Zero Project conference in February. So it's something that when we do our day-to-day -day work, um, we forget that there are partners out there. And when you see them physically and talk to them and try to understand how we can connect and collaborate, I think it gives a lot of opportunities to the organizations participating. And um, I can tell that we really uh, uh, expanded our international relations um, uh, thanks to the Zero Project platform, uh, the connections that was, were created, um, the partners we met, my friends, I have new friends from the Zero Project. So this is something really interesting. And the last thing, the, the third thing that I wanna say is that the involvement of people with disabilities in the conference and that they can apply and they can be peer reviewers. This is something that really uh, encourage participation encourage empowerment and um, we need to also see that as a as a gift in this process thank you Liron and uh, to take your point I just posted my email there you know this is not for us uh, a quiz to see 
what you're doing right or what you're doing wrong for us it really is a journey so we really want to understand the whole picture of what you're doing also talking about language and how you might define what you're doing it's it's a continuous uh, evaluation and if you click at some of uh, our former awardees and the fact sheet you see you you will see online it is kind of a, a uniform language which we have at the zero project but it's a language which we create together with our awardees so we try to of course be cognizant of the fact we are a global foundation we work across as i said all disabilities and that terms might differ and we really try to find a common ground which works for most and we don't want to exclude people from that but at the same time we understand that certain terms might not resonate with the mental health community which is one of the reasons why we uh, decided together with Enosh to host this webinar to kind of really underline that this is open to the mental health community we want beneficiaries to be able to nominate projects which they've benefited from and um, I'm also thankful of Leon the, the feedback you gave in the, the chat window um, which I kind of wanted to stress as well that um, that you mentioned that it's gratifying for people with lived experience to be able to submit the program as a recommendation and yes I really want to highlight that as well and uh, open the floor for questions and that's why uh, Maria Chiara Frank and myself are here please let us know um, if everything which we presented is clear if you have any additional questions about maybe the nomination process what happens once you are an award or maybe what happens the year after you are an award D, you know is this only something which um, you do once and then never again or you know how does the relationship with the zero project continue for years to come should I, should i start uh, um, kind of like the head teacher and pick pick every participant and ask them for <laughs> But then uh, you can see that input. maybe they are not uh, listening. So that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if someone has a question or want to ask something, this is the time. Yes, Cheney. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for these presentations and for hosting the session. Um, Liron, I also especially appreciated your last comments about the importance of adapting what we're doing to suit the language for donors that perhaps we don't usually use. So thank you for saying that. I work at the South African Federation for Mental Health. We are the largest uh, and only national advocacy body for mental health in South Africa. Um, and the way that we're structured is that we work very closely with 17 community-based organizations that provide direct services in the community for people living with mental health. And so we use what they're experiencing to inform our advocacy at a national level with the government. Um, and so while we're working in policy, not, not as decision makers, not in government, and also we would want to perhaps apply with our colleagues who are on the ground delivering the services I see that in the application, it says like, you need to decide your stream, either you're doing the independent living or you're doing political participation. But I think what's so great about what we're doing is that we're trying to find a way to merge both, if that makes sense. So I'd love, and also I'm definitely reaching out to both of you at the end of this, because I want to, talk, to explain more about my idea so that you might be able to say like, this is something worth pursuing or maybe this is not what we're about. Thank you so much. Fantastic, Shani. Um, so in regards to your question, first of all, the good news is you can nominate several times. So what we often see for some for some programs, and I'll give you an example, we just came back from Madrid, Spain, um, from our Latin America conference there, and there's an independent housing program, which the only reason why I was able to get off the ground was a change in policy, which allowed for public-private funding of independent housing projects in the in the community of Madrid. Out of that, the independent housing program grew and they were telling us how the legislative side was so innovative that that was amended in order to be able to fund this program. And we told them, well, you can nominate on the one hand, the amendment in legislation and on the other hand, the independent housing program, which came out of it. 
So we actually encourage numerous nominations, not for you to, you know, spam us with, but we understand that there are programs which are multi-layered and which would maybe answer your question if possible, where there is a certain element which is uh, political participation, and then there's another element which is independent living. So you could either split it up into two nominations or you could nominate it as, as a whole. And um, I would say that maybe, as you mentioned, we take this um, conversation one on one and I can give you further details and kind of advise you on which category uh, to submit in. But um, yeah, if you, um, you have my email, so drop me your contact information and I'll be in touch. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you so much. And thank you for hosting the session again. Really, really helpful. Is there anyone else in the call who is considering a nomination and might have a question or would know someone who might want to nominate? Yes. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Hello. Welcome. Good morning for me. Good afternoon for for everyone. Uh, yes, we have. Um, I'm taking a, a couple of uh, nominations, especially on living an independent life. Uh, so I have a quick question: uh, Is it doesn't matter if this program was already funded by any other institution? Is is, is that okay, or or you have some restriction on that? This is one, and second one is um, um, we have a, a we call it Laverne House, that is a, a, a independent living program for uh, African American teenagers that uh, stay there for a, around six months, but um, because they have problems and uh, facing situation in the past. So uh, we are not allowed to share pictures and, and, and or videos or, or any any information uh, regarding the participants. So, but it's okay if I send uh, pictures of maybe the house and the, uh, or something like that, right? Those are Absolutely. Nice. So, Raul, I'll start with the second question in terms of if I understood your question correctly, privacy issues and not being able to show participants. We absolutely understand that. Um, our intention is not to identify any of the beneficiaries, but you can either, if you want to anonymize them, or if you just want to, by anonymizing them, maybe not show their, their, their direct faces if there's an issue with that, or just show pictures of the facilities. So I think um, that's completely sufficient for us. It's what we just want to make sure is that if it's a strong nomination, it we, would be a pity if it missed just a visual component because it then really tells the story, I think the whole story. But uh, that is not an issue whatsoever. And on, on your first question regarding funding, that is also um, not a problem. So actually a lot of our AODs have various um, funding schemes. For example, we have projects um, in Cambodia which receive USAID funding and that is part also of the nomination to be transparent about your funding structure, because that in many ways answers the replication and the scalability aspect. Because if your project is fantastic and has helped, I don't know, 10,000 people, but the only reason why you were able to do it was because you got a $20 million grant, that is good to know for someone who might see this in Guatemala and say, oh, wow, I would love to replicate this, but maybe the barrier would be, I wouldn't have the $20 million grant you had, Whereas maybe there are other programs which are more cost effective and you can explain why it is cost effective. How does it generate funding or does it, is it a lottery system or, you know, there, there are many types of funding. We just want to understand um, the funding structure and ask for transparency in that regard. Because if you also go in our form AORDs, you will find under funding and outlook their information because our, our understanding is that if you go to our fact sheets from our awardees, you really have a very quick and thorough understanding of where they stand, where the project was implemented, who it benefited, what the funding structure is. And maybe if you would like to get in touch with them to do something similar in your hometown or in your home community. Great, 
Thank you. Yes, yes, because we are uh, full capacity and mm -hmm. we try to expand uh, 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 yep. our, our services. So we are applying for uh, several uh, funding opportunities. So we want to make sure to include all of this structure in the, in the application. And if you have any further questions or if you if you need any assistance in the nomination process, you have my email. Just uh, reach out and we'd be happy to help. Sounds perfect. Thank you. I see there's any hands. Shani, you are uh, uh, raising your hand again, or it's not? It's yes, not. just ah, okay. <laughs> if no one else has any questions, if that's okay. Uh, super. So I just wanted to check about um, the demonstration of impact. What I'm thinking of and why we would want to apply for something like this is that, as I said, we're a national organization, some community based organizations that do independent living do it really well in the country and others need to get up to scratch and what I mean to that same level and what we would want is to scale up the organizations which are doing it really well where they would bring other parts of the country along with them. So we don't we we don't have impact across the country. Like that's why we're applying for this opportunity, perhaps, is to see how we could scale up. And so I guess my question is around, you know, how developed would this project need to be if our project of what we're saying is like it's happened over here, the project would be to scale it up elsewhere. I don't know. Is I think, I, think I, uh, I, I will try to, to answer yes. Robin and, and you will accurate me later, but I think you need to see how the small scale program is impacting the people. And after okay. you show the small impact, you can say this can be scaled up in, in many ways. Um, okay. But I think the impact is, is, is on the practice. It can be a small practice. It can be very large practice. Um, the, there is a variety of the zero project. Okay, super. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. I mean, I think Liron gave you 98.5% of the answer mm -hmm. I was going to give you in that uh, really, because he mentioned there are elements which are doing well, and we want to understand why are they doing well? Is it because you have a particularly interesting participatory model, which is maybe hybrid, which allows people and also in rural communities to be part of the decision making process. And yeah. then to say, it's working well here because of ABC. This is the impact, and the impact can be that, as I said, that you um, convened people once a month in a cafe, and 20 persons with disabilities showed up and told you what they would like to see happen in the community, and you went around and you realized that. That is already an impact. It's 20 people you got out of their houses involved in a process they would otherwise not be involved in, asking about their interests, giving them participation, giving them agency. And then your, or you know, the, the aspect of your nomination would then be, this works extremely well on this level. We would like to be on this level. And you could say, you know, our goal is to have, and we also, as part of the nomination, we also ask you kind of the question, where do you see the organization scaling two and three years? How can Zero Project help? How can other people help? So you're defining also what you hope to get out of the experience. And that's then also information which we take, for example, um, into mind when we create our annual conference to say, okay, could we maybe convene a round table where we bring in uh, Shaney and we bring in others who are working on similar matters. And then that's where the serendipity happens and you see, ah, okay, this is how the Netherlands did it. We could actually use, I don't know, their software platform because it's accessible and it allows everyone to, to join in even with a cell phone and wouldn't be that very great if we could implement it in, in South Africa and vice versa. Maybe they will take something from your project to enrich what they're doing. And that's kind of then what happens at, at the conference among others. Maria, do you have anything to add? Any, any insights? Um, no, I think you and uh, Liron said 99.9%. Um, .9%. um I think you mentioned that you have 17 projects around the country. Um, and 
I really think that you can nominate any of the 17, all of them together or singularly if they have different features. Um, and it really doesn't matter because as Robin uh, said earlier, uh, it's about the impact within the society, within the community that you're working with. It's not that we expect you to change the world. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, super, thank you. The other friends here, Marie and uh, Olabenga, do you want to say something or ask or it's? Looking at Raul, Olabenga, Mary, yeah. any questions you might have, don't be shy. None yet. Fantastic. If anything comes to mind later on, it's kind of, you know, maybe in the shower, you will think, ah, I should have asked Robin this in the webinar. Feel free to to send an email. Um, we I all the contact it. information is there. Um, just let us know. And we, as mentioned, we still have 18 days to go to the deadline. So we do have a bit of time. And, uh, and Robin, it's more than 60 minutes, I have to say. All right. <laughs> Yeah. It's a bit more than 60 minutes to apply. Okay, well, okay, so <laughs> here's where you get the insights. It's, I mean, if, if I was mean, I could say if you're well prepared, it's 60 minutes. But, <laughs> no. but I think um, 60 minutes is if you have all the information collected. So overall, it will take a couple of hours of your time to go back and collect annual reports, to collect photos, to collect videos. Um, but what I would recommend, and this is a good tip, is to create your account, to go in, to get the questions, copy, paste them into a Word document and work offline. Send it to your teams, bring everyone together. You know, not all the wisdom lies within you, even though you might think it does, but share it, get input from different sides. It'll take a bit of time. You'll go through various feedback loops, but then I think you'll have a really good um, nomination and... Uh, Yes, Leron, it might take uh, 65 or 70 minutes. Uh, uh, Maria, go ahead. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add that if you're not part of the Zero Project Network yet, you can uh, sign up to receive updates on our contact form. And we will also update you on the deadline when it's coming closer or if something might change. Uh, and you will receive all the updates uh, that we give to our network. And I posted it in the chat. And we will not spam you. You will get emails every week or so, every second week. So we're, we're very <coughs> measured with our emails. But I would say, uh, Liron, unless there are any other questions, um, we'll close this out, keep it within the hour as we promised. I think short and sweet. Yes. Um, I'm very glad uh, that Raul and Shaney gave us some great questions to work with. Um, please, Shaney, please, Raul, do get in touch with us. Um, you have our email addresses. The same applies to everyone else in the call. Um, as you think about it, you know, digest the webinar, take it with you. Uh, we really hope to have you be part of our family. We always say it's the family you choose or you get to choose. Mm. So um, it's a community. It's a community. Yeah. 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 So we, we, we did not pay Liron to, to show up here. She she's yeah. convinced of it. So we're very glad yeah. to have. Uh, I'm organizing uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic partners uh, with Inosh. And hopefully the takeaway is that for all of you that you also can share with your networks that the Zero Project Call for Nominations is open to the mental health community, is open to people with lived experiences, people with psychosocial disabilities. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Liron, uh, to you personally and also to your team for putting all of this together. We're very glad and honored as always. And, thank you, uh, Robin and Maria, for being with us and explaining everything so deeply. Everyone have a nice evening. Um, to Nigeria, to uh, South Africa, and all the other wonderful places you've joined us from. And uh, take care. Thank you so Bye. much for this. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.